The next speaker uh, is Dr. Tal Dingot Arkofer uh, from the Department of International Relations of the Hebrew University.
The nature of society's identity management strategies in times of societal insecurity depends on their liberal or conservative character and the degree of openness. Mitten and Kingwell each produced then studies of the socio-psychological reactions of states and societies to situations of ontological insecurity, where they focus on the social psychological underpinning of the, of the defensive mechanism, defensive measures employed by the state and the society. According to Mitten, it may be difficult for states, for example, to resolve a security dilemma due to the socio psychological drive to sustain an ontological security that is rooted in mutual routine of enmity. Kimball, for her part, sees securitization as society's psychological psychological response to ontological insecurity and existential anxiety caused by globalization. Accordingly, the adoption of what she entitles the securitizations of the self's psychological defensive strategy involves the essentialization of perceptions of self and collective identity by social groups which construct all-encompassing, singular, contained, and inflexible biographical narratives that exclude and delegitimize the other in order to regain ontological security. However, both Mitte and Kimball still leave the door open for other socio-psychological reactions that are not radically defensive of the collective self. There is where my research uh, on the strategy of managing securitization as an identity management <coughs> strategy comes in. Borrowing insights from the above literature, this paper examines three different socio psychological reactions to the 2015 refugee crisis which were at play in the EU. The first, the first socio psychological logic explains how immigration uncertainty. Rated, uh, generated feelings of ontological insecurity amongst EU member states, thus triggered an inward looking mechanism, namely the reaffirmation of national identities and policies. This helped to restore feelings of ontological security at the expense of supranational European policies. The study also explores how this logic makes some member states, such as the Visegrad countries, wish to adopt an independent stance on immigration. More specifically, the study divides the socio-psychological response of the visit right for into three stages. In the first phase, the 2015 refugee crisis is analyzed as having a disturbing psychological effect on the visit rights for collective self-perception. It created a critical situation of traumatic event, to use the psychological jargon, and led to cognitive dissonance regarding the collective self-identity in three different levels as sovereign states that are supposed to provide physical order, as nation states that are supposed to provide cultural order, and as EU member states that are supposed to enjoy regulation on the part of the EU, which once worked as an anxiety controlling mechanism, reinforcing the sense of trust, predictability, and control in the world, thus causing uncertainty and ontological insecurity. The next phase describes how when confronted with this so-called traumatic event, the Visegrad 4, but other member states as well, you can think of Britain and other countries, have tried to meet the strong psychological need to defend their sense of identity, which has come under threat. This is done, to use Kimball term, by securitizing their subjectivity both as sovereign states and as nation states via the renationalization of geographical narratives and immigration policies. For example, by unilaterally deciding to build fences along the border with Balkan countries or refusing to accept Muslim refugees. Moreover, and we are still in the first logic, the search for ontological security in the context of immigration-related uncertainties has increased and skepticism in the visit out for towards the European project norms, values, and policies that no longer provide such a security. According to the second psychological logic, there is growing immigration related uncertainty and ontological insecurity on the part of the EU itself due to two challenges.
challenges. The challenge of unmanageable immigration to the EU's semi-sovereign image as the gatekeeper of the Schengen zone and as an order provider. And the challenge of skeptic European member states to the EU's trust structures of multilateralism and solidarity. I argue that despite these challenges, the European Commission representing the EU is driven by a socio-psychological logic of managing its identity and its securitization. As a result, the European Commission avoids an essentialization process of its identity. On the one hand, it preserves its supranational identity consisting of cosmopolitan, non-nationalist features of human rights and refugees-related inclusive norms. On the other hand, it tried to empower its sovereign like image by reclaiming its power to manage the crisis. For example, the terms protect and defend are more common in European Commission discourse in 2011, since the arms been popped uh, up, and especially since 2015. It also strengthened its identity as gatekeeper of the Schengen zone and borders and as order provider by using tougher collective border control policies with the help of Frontex, relocation of refugees, promoting refugees quotas, and even exporting immigration-related uncertainty outside Europe through readmission agreements, such as the one with Turkey, to do this. Moreover, there is another dimension for the European Commission's second logic, and strategy for management and securitization. In a climate of growing Euroscepticism, the European Commission regains its ontological security by presenting a biographical narrative of solidarity, multilateralism, and inclusive liberal values in response to the antagonistic non-liberal discourse and practice of European states like the big Visegrad Four. Yet we saw how we finish this. Yet we saw that the Commission has also recently modified its tendency to securitize itself vis a vis skeptic countries using a compromising discourse and accepting the Visegrad Four's idea of flexible solidarity. Um, I will not, unfortunately, I will not, I don't have time to, to elaborate on the third logic, so I will my As you see, well, we are speaking about uh, refugees and immigration and new subjects that would not have been uh, tackled in our association 10 years ago. And uh, uh, this goes as well for uh, the next speaker uh, and for our keynote address that comes later. Um, Katrina Konarek is the next speaker. She's from the University of the Bundeswehr in Munich but uh, also working from the Haifa Center for German and European Studies uh, at the University of Haifa. And uh, I invite her to take the floor. As you see, we are starting to have um, non-Israelis making their thesis in Israel, which is uh, a, a, a show that the quality of our European studies uh, is uh, at least as good as the one uh, we have in the European Union itself. Uh, thank you very much also for the kind introduction. Actually, I'm doing a joint PhD at both universities, so Professor Tobias is quite right. Uh, I would like also to uh, thank the whole uh, conference team for putting together such a nice conference. And I really enjoyed the day. Um, our panel is on challenges and uh, as Professor Tobias already mentioned, I will continue with the main challenge in the European Union at the moment, namely the refugee crisis, but at the same time I would like to turn this challenge into a chance in the sense of uh, Professor Landau who told us this morning about bringing the people closer together because I would like to interpret this challenge of the so-called refugee crisis as a chance to bring um, Europe more together and to develop a common migration policy that we don't have at the moment. Um, therefore, I would like to do now very quickly two steps. Namely, first of all, to reflect the last 60 years of migration policy uh, very briefly and quickly, and then to outline six principles for a future uh, common migration policy in the EU 
The six principles are developed on the base of European think tankers, but also of proposals by members of the European Parliament and uh, by the European Commission. And I would really like if we have the time to discuss these principles with you and to understand what you think about it. Okay, um, I would like to start um, to give you a short overview about uh, the last 60 years of migration policy. Why did people uh, come to Europe? Um, I would like to uh, defer uh, four periods. A first period um, with uh, starting uh, the Treaty of Rome and um, uh, we would call it a guest worker period uh, that uh, encouraged people also mainly within the member states uh, to uh, go to other labor markets. Uh, in this time period from 58 to 72 there were issued over 8 million uh, working uh, permits for people to enter uh, different labor markets and this was a time or a period also of reconstructing Europe. So main uh, migration happened also within the member states and uh, in order to uh, encourage the economy in the member states. A second period I would like to outline as the period uh, of migration um, adjustment. It goes together with the oil crisis and economic crisis in 1973. Uh, many of the uh, then member states uh, cancelled their guest working policy and decided okay, the people who are here can stay here but we are not uh, hiring more people and getting them into the country. But we would ra ra rather like to focus on uh, adjusting, um, speaking of uh, maybe reunification of families and integrating the people that are already here very good in our um, society. Uh, in this time, uh, you can also find some uh, special association agreements here. I would like to outline the uh, agreement um, that was also drafted a bit before uh, with Turkey. That still, um, there was still a work immigration from Turkey, but in a more limited way compared to the first period. Um, a third period I would outline um, is becoming a, a mixed uh, migration, namely um, work migration that started again after overcoming the oil crisis and having much more uh, economically power again. Um, and here in this time period starts also um, developing a kind of a common asylum policy because we have a crisis all around the world and people are standing at the borders of the, in this time, EU member states and wanting to enter. Uh, the EU creates at uh, this time the Schengen Agreement with uh, reducing border controls and making the freedom of movement much easier. Uh, we have the Dublin Regulation that until today is uh, still in practice. Um, also dis uh, discussing about uh, asylum processes and um, how uh, each member state should take responsibility for asylum seekers. Um, and also uh, in this time we have the introduction um, of the concept of a common European citizenship outlined by the Treaty of Maastricht in 1992. Um, a fourth period I would like to say is the period that started in 1997 until today um, where we had discussions also about work migration but much more about um, that we need specific kind of workers, skilled workers, that we should try to encourage them to enter the European Union and of course uh, what we have today uh, is a raising amount of asylum seekers due to the uh, crisis also in the Middle East, due to the crisis in uh, Afghanistan but also due to the uh, economic problems that you find uh, on the African continent. Um, in this uh, area it's also we find the Treaty of uh, Amsterdam that already kind of outlines the common immigration policy but um, what I would like to show uh, in the next step in this kind of six principles uh, a common immigration policy that is uh, quite existing on the paper but not really uh, implemented in the member states. Okay, uh, to the six principles. Um, one of uh, the first thing to mention uh, should be that um, where are we standing in Europe today? We are facing um, a shrinking uh, society, like uh, from a demographic point of view, um, the population started to shrink. shrink. Um, we really need like an influx of people, so uh, it's also very important to outline that we need uh, immigration in order to keep uh, the European population um, up, and we also need it for economic reasons. Um, what is the first principle I would like to mention uh, is to, to outline um, that the European Union, Union has to understand 
that the current or previous tools of management um, are not uh, sufficient enough, that more uh, EU regulations have to be developed and that the uh, migration policy really has to be uh, harmonized and implemented in the member states in a much better way. That leads me to a second principle, namely the real implementation of the common European uh, asylum system. There is an idea existing on the paper and also work in process, but still, um, as we can see on the second point, uh, very different, differently implemented uh, in uh, the 28 member states, which leads to the problem that uh, asylum seekers, for example, we had them from the Balkan route, uh, arrived firstly in the EU, EU state of Hungary, but they didn't want to stay there because they knew that the asylum process there is very different from, the, from Germany or from Sweden, and that leads us to um, a lot of problems how to deal with this. Is this the process you were speaking of, or the, I guess, the integration? It's the process of uh, uh, receiving status, or the process of, of dealing with it once you receive that status? I, would, uh, I come to this point also. I'm, ta I'm talking about both of the things. The integration is the, now I'm talking about receiving, okay, and how to deal, but the integration <coughs> is the third principle that I also really would like to apply. Um, I'm sorry if I'm too fast. Yeah, yeah, because we have three. Okay. And we have four principles left, so okay. Um can I speak with that? Okay. Uh, a third principle I think that I also would like to underline and that is highly discussed in the European Union at the moment, that we should strongly avoid um, uh, humanitarian disasters as we can see them at the moment at the European uh, borders. We're speaking here about people trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea with boats and the big discussion, what should we do with them, and should we let them drown, or should we um, rescue these people. And this is also, I would like to refer to Professor Vandau, uh, it's something that uh, it's a common European value to say we have a system of uh, humanitarian rules and we would like to implement it and this is what makes our union strong and this is what we should also focus on. Uh, a second really important point in this thing is that we should offer more ways of uh, legal immigration. Um, a proposal, uh, there's a proposal from members of the European Parliament uh, saying, for example, uh, European um, consulates or um, embassies uh, within uh, the like, uh, non-European states should offer easy, easy visa applications and people should get visas to come to Europe to apply there for asylum and to wait there and not to have like, this very difficult ways how to cross the sea or how to go by feet in order to apply uh, just in the European Union. A fourth principle is the principle of integration of refugees. Um, also here uh, we have to understand that um, we need much better tools in the European Union to integrate uh, people coming. Um, we need much less uh, uh, bureaucracy in this um, whole matter. We need to uh, um, get people into the working process. But, uh, and this is also a fifth principle, we need also to make clear to the European uh, people or to the population that this migration is needed, that we need these people, that we want to integrate them in the labor market, that we also have a space there for them. Here it's also important to outline that public uh, actors should be much more uh, implemented in this process, progress of uh, integration and it should be an integration on all levels. Okay, a uh, fifth principle is the um, support of countries outside of the European Union, uh, speaking about um, that uh, the European Union doesn't shut down its borders uh, and destabilize countries outside of the border, but that it takes up a kind of responsibility and take part in the UNHCR uh, resettlement programs and um, mobilization programs of uh, people who are looking for asylum. And the sixth and last uh, principle I already mentioned is demonstrating on an internal political level that this kind of foreign workers and immigration is needed. Um, I would also like to outline it, especially we talked about it uh, today a bit, in um, the rise of the right-wing parties all over Europe that normally take this topic of refugee, refugee crisis and especially underlining that people are flooding our working markets and uh, taking away uh, work uh, from the local population and that could be a real uh, improvement in the common uh, foreign policy of the EU or migration policy of the EU to underline and say yes, uh, it's, it's important that we need these people to come. We should also discuss uh, um, rationally and constructively about quotas and uh, this proper uh, migration would 
also help us to uh, have our economy more stabilized. Okay, thank you so much. We, we just got uh, to the six places.